what happens when the left can't get voters or Congress to enact their radical agenda? Well, they turn to the courts and their ongoing strategy of packing them with liberal judges. Whether it's overturning state laws on voter ID and the definition of marriage, or extending due process rights to detainees at Guantanamo Bay, liberals have increasingly decided that activist judges are their tried and true allies. Control the U.S. Supreme Court is, according to a liberal law school dean writing in The Atlantic magazine, tantalizing for those on the left. But why so? Because if the next president is one with a liberal philosophy, the court's current 4-4 split will become a 5-4 left-leaning progressive machine that will no doubt strike down religious freedom protections, overturn over 200 state laws that place limits on abortion, and holy grail of holy grail will gut the Second Amendment. And while that is the angle getting most of the headlines, it is by no means the only judicial bench where the next president will have major influence. The Supreme Court takes on less than 100 cases a year, but the 13 federal appeals courts around the country, when well, 2014, they heard over 50,000 cases. And after eight years of President Obama's nominees filling vacancies on those benches, liberals now control nine of the 13 federal appeals courts. If you doubt how much impact one president can have, note this. Liberal judges controlled just one of those courts when Obama took office. But the president doesn't get all the credit. He only nominated these folks. Had Republicans in the Senate spent more time challenging these appointments and less time letting them just sail through, the numbers might be a little bit different. Now, GOP leaders will say Democrats controlled the Senate for six years of Obama's presidency, and therefore they had little ability to put a stop to these confirmations. But considering just this past year, when the GOP controlled the Senate, only two of Obama's judicial nominees ran into any serious opposition. And even then, when all was said and done, only 36 Republicans voted against one and 34 against the other. That means both judges received lifetime appointments because Republicans pushed them across the finish line. And we're not done yet. Be on the lookout for Obama and his Democratic allies in the Senate to start demanding votes for his remaining judicial appointments in exchange for any legislation Republicans may want. The GOP should not cave. Legislation comes and goes, but federal judges are there for life.